The story begins with the battles of robots, which were controlled, people went to their deaths. Since then, the life of the hero of this story has changed. He, controlling a huge robot, was able to attack the enemy and knock him down. The girl sitting next to the young man told Yuta about how strong the fur was, which the hero controlled. So the story begins with these moments about our hero. Events move us back to the times of today. The hero is going on a school trip, which he was really looking forward to. The young man liked one girl from the first year of their studies and now he was going to confess his feelings to her. The girl who was sitting next to him on the bus asked why the hero was nervous. She thought that the young man was scared, because, according to her, he always made such a face when he was nervous. This is a girl who does not understand a man's heart a childhood friend of our hero. Technically, she is his assistant in this big operation that the young man conceive. And looking at the guy, the girl asked if the young man was ready to confess, because the one he was going to confess to was the most beautiful girl not only in the class, but also one of the most beautiful girls in the city. It was Shurayuki Yui. The hero was looking at a beautiful brunette who was sitting several seats in front of him and laughing, covering her mouth with her hand. The girl was a friend of the very girl who was supposed to help our hero win the heart of a beauty. The girl, hearing these words, was angry at the young man for saying them out loud, although she helped the young man for free in his affairs of the heart. The young man apologized and it was at this moment that something strange happened to their bus. All the guys jumped up in their seats and thought that an earthquake had started. Then everyone started screaming and teacher Minami sensei tried to calm everyone down, asking the guys to hold hands and not panic. In an instant, it was all over and no one could figure out what had happened to them. Looking out the window, our hero looked out the window in surprise at the place in front of him in which they found themselves and whether it was Japan. After getting off the bus, the students were met by knights in armor and with spears demanding that they get off the bus right away. Our hero, looking up, saw a huge robot that was lifting the bus and could not understand what was happening. Najisa grabbed the youth at that moment. The young man tried to calm her down by saying that the robots at first glance did not want to offend them, as it seemed to the young man. A man dressed like in the old days came out and asked to be excused for the rude manners they showed the strangers. The man, looking at the guys, saw that they were earthlings and said that they could call this place another world. The girl asked what happened to them and if the man knew anything. He looked at them from under his brows and said that he knew what had happened to them. After all, they called them to sell them to other people. No one could understand what the man was talking about, but he decided to tell them. Ancient tools called bellows are used in this world. Bellows are used in civil engineering, shipping and much more, and these bellows use a special kind of energy and communication. The unknown man continued to tell the guys. In this world of Farb, there are few people with that rare energy and they did not have enough pilots at all. The teacher was trying to understand what the man wanted to convey to them. The man went on to explain that they, the earthlings, had this Rudia value energy and that they had many such people on earth. So, people from this world have done a lot of calculations and research, specifically calling on earthlings. The teacher said that it was too selfish, but only by shouting about it, they tried to calm the girl down. The man looked at the captured teacher who was lying on the ground and told her that he was sorry, but the status of these pilots in this world is high enough, so he did not think that they would live a bad life. Anyway, tomorrow the people will be sold and it was better for them to pray that they had a high value of ore, and offered them a little rest. The bus landed in the middle of a garden near a large castle, and the guys were placed in this castle, where they had to rest before they were sold. Yuta was lying and thinking about his own, when he was interrupted by a classmate who asked the hero if he was interested in finding out what the essence of this meaning of Rudia was. Yuta was surprised by Haranishi who adapted too quickly. Haranishi meant that the young man would get better treatment if he had a higher value, so of course he would like a higher value. And turning to a young man named Mikake, Haranishi asked what he thought about all this. The young man began to think about the meaning of Rudia, which he knew nothing about, and decided that the man they had seen earlier was deceiving them. If that was the case, then Shuriyuki-san could have the most value here, Mikake thought. Meanwhile, the girls stood apart from the guys and tried to support each other. The hero, looking at his beloved, who was standing not far from him, thought that they did not have a single clue and he too was in solidarity with the others who were discussing the girl, namely that Shuriyuki Yui had the highest score, and therefore the greatest value. The guys were lined up and each had to be checked in special equipment. One of the classmates got into this mysterious device and heard that his strength was 29,000 and he was a double Highlander. The man recording the results said that the young man was so close to becoming a triple Highlander and it was amazing. This time they already had two Highlanders, and they could hit the jackpot. Haranishi went next and our hero wished him luck. The value of the young man was 33-0, so it came to Yui and her value was 36,000. She was a triple Highlander. The girl looked in surprise and did not understand what it meant. Yuta looked at her and thought that he knew in advance that the girl was different. Everyone applauded the girl as if it was a holiday. 
the young man was interested to know what its meaning was. There were several people in front of him, including his girlfriend. Najasa got into the machine, and the young man carefully observed her meaning. Rudia's value was 65 and the girl was a semi-lander. Smiling at Yuta, Najasa thought about her result and left. It was finally the hero's turn. These numbers meant everything in this world and with all that said, the young man was still curious. And standing on this machine, which everyone had entered before him, the man, looking at the hero recording the results, was surprised. Standing in the machine, he showed the power of two to our hero and rechecking again. The observers saw that there could be no mistake. The value of the hero's rudia was two. The young man realized that this was the end, because he had the lowest score of all those who took the test. Then the auction of those called from Earth was announced and the whole hall rejoiced at this event, and the host of the event began to announce each student. The Highlander with the value of 12,000 ore went first, and it was decided to start with 10 million gold. Everyone started betting. It was sold to the Valkia Empire for 160 million. Sophomores from the third grade were being sold out and they were all destined to be separated. Najasa, shuriyuki san Yuta thought that they might never see each other again. At that moment, someone was sold to the Kingdom of the Ruble for 1.2 billion gold. At that moment, Yuta continued to think about the situation that had developed, because it was no longer like going on a school trip. The host was announcing the main event of the day. The biggest pearl was presented on stage and in front of the audience was a triple Highlander with a value of 36,000 ore. The stakes were raised and unprecedented sums were offered for the Shurayuki girl. Yuta saw how different it was from what it had been before. Someone offered 12 billion and there were no more bids. Sold to the Irish Empire for 12 billion gold. Everyone started whispering that when it came to the highest value of Rudia lately, everyone was taken away by Erish. It turned out that someone had heard rumors that the Erish Empire had found a new source of Orichalcum and therefore they could buy such expensive people at auction. The next lot was Najasa. The girl stood and was nervous, because her Rudia value was 65 and she was a half mountain. Our hero was watching the girl closely. Everyone was betting and so Najasa left for 20 million. The girl tried to smile and waved at our hero. It was sold to the Empire of Amria for 20 million gold. At that moment, Yuta was thinking about his confession and the fact that he did not want this, did not want such a fate, and the passions were boiling. The presenter announced that a very sad racer was about to be auctioned. It's not something for sale, he declared. But since these are the rules, we need to put this guy up for auction, the presenter shouted. The meaning of Rudia too. Yuta stood on the stage in front of everyone. The presenter announced that the young man was completely useless. Someone would probably buy him as a souvenir, he asked the audience. Everyone looked at the young man in surprise. Someone in general wondered if such a thing was possible. Someone was laughing, and someone couldn't look at the young man at all. Yuta looked at the floor. He was ashamed and sad of his own helplessness. No one wanted to buy the guy out. And the presenter asked for at least one gold piece for him, and then some young man decided to buy the hero for two nuts that were in his hands. Yuta got into the cart and was taken away. Najasa watched with sadness in her eyes as the guy was taken away from her, and not some kind of cart was waiting for her, but a beautiful carriage. Behind all this picture, behind the girl there was a beautiful castle, which she had to get into. The young man was riding in a cart to some abandoned village, where there was a small hangar in which he was to live. Arriving at the place where the guy was forced to climb up and sit on the floor, calling it his home from now on. The young man came to a place where a large number of people were sitting. Looking at the guy who brought him, our hero asked about the food, but he was told that today's food had already been given and had to wait until tomorrow. The young man did not believe in what was happening to him and sat down on the floor with his elbows. Sitting on the floor, he saw a pair of legs that came up to him and it was a girl who asked if the guy was hungry. He looked at the girl and thought about the tangled hair and clothes that were all torn and looked very untidy. He realized that this was such a place, another world in which slavery existed, and remembering his friends, he thought about what awaited him next. Elsewhere, the guard stood at the gate and talked about whose Rudia value was too. Remembering the young man, the one who stood and watched this from afar, one of the guards saw how the needle made a full circle, but the second said that this could not be. The device that measured strength could only reach 10,000. And the guard believed him because he had never heard of someone with a value of 10,000. And with this level of Rudia, the young man won't even be able to activate the matches. On this day, the girl came up to our hero and asked him to take what she had in her hand. The young man asked Nanami and said that the girl had food in her hand as a last resort. Was she sure that she wanted to give it to a beginner like him? The girl, despite the young man, said that the feeling of hunger brought suffering and she knew it well. The young man looked at the girl and said nothing. After which, after thinking about it, he thanked her and said that only her kindness was enough for him. The girl asked the young man not to act rashly because they didn't even know if they could eat tomorrow. And the hero thought that she was not serious when she said such things. 
The girl explained to the young man that most often they were fed once every three days and our hero should have eaten what she offered him, because no one knew what could happen tomorrow and they would have food. The young man, taking her gift, thought about the child that stood in front of him and was thrown into such a terrible place. After his reflections, the hero suggested that the girl share the food together. She asked in surprise if the young man wanted to share the food equally and Yuta said that it was much tastier to eat with someone. Everyone was asleep, wrapped in thin fabrics on the floor in a haystack. Our hero, unaccustomed to such conditions, could not fall asleep at all. He was very cold and very hard. The young man simply did not understand how it was possible to sleep in such a place. Then he felt a rustle behind him. Behind him, he saw the same little girl who had shared food with him in the morning. The hero tried to remember her name and thought about why such a little girl was in such a place. They were woken up early the next day. It was work time. The man who opened the door said that it was time for everyone to get up and our hero, barely opening his eyes, gathered himself and went with everyone. He thought about how he wanted to sleep and that he had not been able to sleep properly that night in these conditions. And he accepted that this was the life of a slave. Yuta looked at Nanami in front of him, a kind girl who helped our hero by sharing food. The young man was overcome by thoughts about whether the girl was going to live like this all this time until she died. Or not, he could not find an answer and wanted to do something for her. But now he realized that he was absolutely helpless. After a long day of work, the hero was thrown today's portion of food and, sitting down in his seat, he decided to ask if that was all they had earned for today. Nanami tried to cheer up the young man by saying that it was better than nothing. The young man, after looking at the girl, decided to ask her a question about how she could be in such a place. Nanami did not look at the young man, but the question he asked put the girl in an awkward position. Then, answering the young man's question, Nanami said that her own mother had sold her. The hero realized that by asking this question directly to a small child, he had screwed up in front of her in a big way. After Nanami smiled, which the hero did not expect, and the girl told that her mother received money for her expenses for a month. That's what she told her Nanami. The girl had to put up with it. While telling the story and holding food in her hands, Nanami smiled at our hero and he had nothing else to say. He just kept silent and smiled. Night fell, and everyone went to bed, again wrapped in thin shreds of blankets, under which they somehow tried to keep warm. Yuta heard Nanami sobbing and decided to ask her what happened. Then the girl cried even more. The young man apologized for making her remember the moments that were difficult for her. But Nanami replied that she was fine because she was able to help her family and now they were able to fill their stomachs, so the weight was good. The young man jumped up and thought to himself that he was an idiot, because the little girl was sold by her family and this could not be normal in any way. After these words, he hugged the child. That night, Nanami screamed at the top of her voice from her own pain caused by her parents and at the same time held tightly to our hero, the only one who was ready to help her. So they slept until morning in an embrace. The next day and after that, the characters got closer. Nanami also began to call the young man by another name, namely by his first name, bringing him a doll. The girl showed that she had found it at the estate and the young man was proud of Nanami. The girl was very strong. She was happy because she managed to find a new friend and Nanami was very happy about it, sharing this news with Yuta, who always supported her and tried to be with her for one thing. Waking up from the screams, the young man saw how the chief came to Nanami and asked where the girl got it, accusing her of equality from the estate. Nanami was standing with her back to the man at that moment and tightly holding her doll that she had found. The same one threatened her to know her place, because she was only a slave. Our hero rushed to Nanami's aid. The young man explained to the main one that he had found the doll outside, and it was not from the estate, for which he immediately received a slap in the face and was demanded to quickly return the lost thing to the place. Nanami immediately after this price ran to the wounded Yuta and, very worried about him, asked if our hero was okay, whose face was bruised and he did not look well. Yuta apologized to Nanami because he could not protect his friend. But the girl, hugging him, said that all this was not important and the young man was the most valuable thing in her life. At these words, she hugged the guy, and he thought about what a kind child he had in front of him. After his thoughts, the hero exhaled and thought about something important. Night turned to day and everything went on as usual. The main one, closing the door once again, the guy said that everything was over for today and that the slaves would not receive food from him. Everyone was silent, because they had nothing to object. But then Yuta got up from his knees, and Nanami was afraid of what the guy wanted to do. Looking at the door, the young man realized that the guy had not locked the door. There were other people standing behind him, who informed the hero that the door was opening with the value of Rudia. It cannot be opened if your Rudia value is less than 300. One of the women reported that she was also with them. In this place, the woman continued, there were people who only had a rudium value less than 100. So no one, she said, could get out of this slavery. Only those with the highest values. The woman reported that she was very upset by this situation and could not do anything. 
The young man, after listening to her, understood why all the people in this place lived that way. But touching the door, the young man easily opened it. Moonlight fell on everyone and a puff of wind entered the room. The woman looked at our hero with her mouth open and the young man, also surprised, asked her why the door opened. Nanami looked at Yuta with her fingers crossed and the young man, turning to her, said that he was going to leave this place and offered the girl to go with him. She beamed with happiness. The woman, still not believing what was happening, decided to ask what the significance of Rudia was for the guy, since he was able to open the door. The young man replied that his meaning was low. Only two, after these words our hero disappeared with Nanami with a smile on his face. The next day, our heroes went to the city. Nanami wondered how big this city was, and she thought that they would have to look for a job nearby. But the young man asked her to wait a little, because then he would give her so much food that she could eat her fill. The girl agreed with her friend. The guys started looking for work and went to all the places that were in their way, so that they asked to be taken at least somewhere. But when they heard about the value of Rudia, which was equal to two, they all immediately refused the young man and asked him to look for another job. Because for many this value was too small, and who I just didn't want to mess with a guy and a little girl at all. Desperate, the young man came to the pier and asked the man if he could work here. He immediately asked a question about the meaning of Rudia. Of course, it was two, as our hero always answered. Then the man did not believe that such a thing was possible. But still he mostly did not care and he agreed to hire the hero. There was a big ship in front of them. The task was simple, to make the ship move, the worker explained to the young man. The young man could eat two meals a day and receive three gold points for the trip, explaining the conditions. The man asked if this was suitable for the guy and he would agree to anything, so they were accepted. Showing him a cabin full of men, they explained to him that he would sleep here. Yuta and Nanami looked at the sailors in front of them, who were sitting in this cabin. You could ask these guys if you had any questions, the chief told him. One of the sailors turned to the guys and asked what their names were and what the meaning of Rudia was for the Ute. They introduced themselves and Yuta explained that his value was two. The man argued out loud that it was better than nothing. And then the sailor began to explain to the guy about the mechanism that was behind him. The job of the sailors on the ship was to make this very mechanism rotate. The higher the value of the ore, the easier it was for the worker. But at least that's what they said, the sailor said. But all the men that were here had a Rudia value of less than 100. Because of such a low value, it was very difficult to work, so our hero had to be ready for this. Looking at the man from the poop, he said that they had previously been told that they would sleep here. Looking at the young man, the sailor answered his question by saying that it was in this cabin that they would have to sleep and eat. Then the hero asked if they could go out, to which the smoking sailor asked Yuta who he was and why he needed to go out, because it was a slave ship. Yuta realized that he had come back to what he and Nanami had run away from. And at that moment the departure command sounded and everyone had to get ready to leave. Other sailors shouted and grabbed the mechanism. Everyone rushed to the mechanism and began to turn it. The ship slowly began to sail away. The young man, seeing how hard they were trying, realized how difficult it looked and thought that he would do what he could by grabbing the mechanism. But only when he took hold of the hero was pushed in the back. And he did not understand what had happened. The mechanism of the ship was shaking and everyone was surprised at what was happening. The ship rushed off, and the sailors asked not even to set sails, because then they would only slow down its course. Arriving back at the port, the heroes were given a reward along with the rest equal to 10 gold and they could go outside. The young man wondered how everyone could go outside, because then everyone could escape and after hearing this, the sailor who had previously explained to the young man about the work system told him that this job was the best they could find with such a rudia value that they had and that it was the best that could be found. Rejoicing, the sailor left. Yuta looked at Nanami and decided to ask her if the girl wanted to stay here. Nanami, looking at the young man, simply replied that she wanted to be with Yuta and all this was not important to her. Yuta decided to ask the girl again, because then staying with him she could start starving again. And even so, smiling, she wanted to stay with Yuta. The young man decided that since she wanted it that way, then it would be so. In another house, the girl turned to Najisa and asked what her name was. Najisa introduced herself by looking at the floor and being very shy. The girl replied that she was the second princess of Amuria Lainel and said that it was nice to meet her. Najisa, preoccupied with her own thoughts and looking sadly at one point, also answered the girl in the same way for the sake of decency. Lainel, seeing that the girl did not react in any way, began to calm her down, because it was clear to her that Najisa would be worried that she was sold immediately after arriving in another world. Lainel immediately asked the girl not to worry, because she promised that she would treat her as an equal. People with a high value of Rudia were appreciated everywhere, the girl replied, and in a small country like the one Najisa got into, she would definitely be pampered, Lail said. Najisa, hearing her words, asked about how people with low Rudia values were treated, as badly as she thought or not. Lainel remembered the young man who was at the auction with a very low value of ore. 
Najisa also asked what happened to this young man, because she was very worried about him. Saying this, the girl clutched her skirt with her hands, and tears flowed down her cheeks. Then, seeing the girl's reaction, Lainel understood, and Najisa confirmed her words. She liked Yuta very much and for quite a long time, she confessed for the first time to someone. The girl knelt in front of Najisa and tried to calm her down, saying that she would look for him and maybe she could buy him back. Hugging the girl, Lainel said. Najisa calmed down a little after her words and Lainel asked the girl to trust her. The next day, Lainel brought Najisa to her father. The man was sitting in an armchair and saw that the girl in front of him was a semi-landing module and told Najisa that he was glad to meet her, introducing himself as the ruler of Emuria Majuni. Najisa, looking at him, also introduced herself. Alvanel immediately attacked her father, saying that Najisa was very nervous and that her father had to smile. Then the man, showing his daughter a smile, asked if it was enough to make it pleasant and the daughter certainly did not like it. Najisa was laughing, and then the girl called her sister and asked her to introduce her to Najisa. Najisa was introduced to Himari as the third princess, who was quite lively. The girl replied that it was not so and tried to hit her sister lightly. Then, she asked after this fun where Yukiha was. The girl tried to suggest, to my sister, that the girl was where she always spent her time. Then Lainel took Najisa and wanted to show her something, namely the robot, as Najisa first, called it, then shouting to the robot for someone to come down and say hello. The robot's heart opened and a girl came out. When she saw Najisa, she realized that it was the same girl of the semi-landing module and then the girl introduced herself as Yukiha is the first princess and Yukiha decided to get right to the point and show Najisa her furs, magic fur, rasper. Najisa stood in front of a large robot. They immediately began to explain to her that for this robot needed 5,000 ores to control, but it had a maximum of 12,000, be great armor and a great strength, Yuka and Najai said. It was the strongest fur in their country. The girl looked at it with fascinated eyes, realizing that this was what this fur was. Even with the strongest rudia value, Yuka couldn't activate it and that's why they needed a pilot with a value of at least 5,000 rudia. Najisa, she asked if she would be used in the war. Yuka had decided to calm the girl down and said that these robots were indeed used in the war, but in her peaceful country, Amuria, they did not use robots for this purpose. Najisa tried to believe her words. Meanwhile, in another city, Yuta and Nanami walked along the benches and shops and Nanami stared at the one where the clothes were lying. Then Yuta decided to ask which of the clothes the girl wanted. Nanami was happy that she could choose clothes. It was the first time she chose something like this because she had not had such an opportunity before. When they arrived at the cash register, Jerome was told what they needed and they were asked for two gold and twenty silver coins. The young man, giving money to the cashier, asked, Will the coins that he put in be enough in the cellar? After counting the coins, assured the young man that it was enough. It seems that he was beginning to understand the monetary rate in this country. He and Nanami have left. 17 gold and 80 silver coins. One large loaf of bread cost about 50 silver coins, and 100 silver coins were equal to one gold. And the young man figured it out, that they can find a place to spend the night. Nanami smiled and hummed as they walked, and our hero talked about the monetary equivalent of this country. Looking at his girlfriend, he realized that the girl was happy and looked happy, with his new clothes and shoes. Then he decided to tell Nanami that after the bathroom, they would definitely be on new people. When I heard about Nanami's bath, I was so happy, because she had never taken a bath before. Entering a new place similar to a hotel, the heroes asked for two gold pieces for a room with a small bathroom, and the young man agreed. When he came to the room, he saw a bed where he could finally sleep. After checking the water, he saw that it was good and Nanami, who was sold by her own parents, it seems that she perceived our hero as her older brother, decided that he should be responsible for this as her only family and should provide her with food and let her hang out. The hero also bought clothes for himself and, after trying them on, realized how comfortable and good they looked on him. Nanami, having put on a dress, asked Yuta, a little shy, if he liked it. He stroked the girl on the head and said that she looked good, and suggested going further. He thought to himself that the best solution was to start with the living conditions. Sitting on a bench, Yuta talked about his rudia potential, which was equal to two and prevented him from finding a job, because no one wanted to mess with a young man with such a value. And after sharing a piece of bread, the hero asked Nanami to understand why they had to live like this for some more time. The girl looked at Yuta and it was enough for her that he was there and she let the young man know it. The hero was smiling and looking at the girl. And at that moment they were interrupted by a man who asked the guys about work. A respectable man in a hat and suit offered the guys. One thing I wanted to pay 50 gold per month for. Upon hearing this, the hero did not 
believe it, because it was a lot and it seemed suspicious to Utah. Remembering the situation on the ship, the hero decided to ask what needed to be done. The man reported that he had a daughter about the same age as the guys and asked them to talk to her. Mentally he imagined his girl. The guys thought about it and nodded. Then they realized the meaning of what the man wanted from them and it surprised the heroes very much, because it was nothing at all. They asked the man in surprise if he really wanted only this and he reported that this was the only request. Then Utah replied that they would take up the case. The man was also surprised that the guys agreed very quickly, because the request was quite unusual. Then the man introduced himself as Belfast and then thanked the guys for the fact that he could hope and count on their help. Arriving at the house and entering the room of the girl with whom they were to communicate, the young man was surprised by the sight that appeared before him. A girl was sitting on the bed, and the young man saw ears on her head. This was unusual for Utah, because the ears twitched, which means they were real. And then, turning around, a half-human face with an animal nose appeared in front of them. The man who brought them to his house asked the guys if they were surprised by what they saw and began the story. It was the curse of a half-beast. Belfast was an aristocrat and he had many competitors in the trade. Apparently one of them hated him so much and therefore made his daughter like this. He was very sorry that he couldn't do anything about this curse himself. Yuta went to the girl's bed and held out his hand to her. But when he reached for her, the girl squeezed her eyes shut because she thought that the hero wanted to hit her. But the guy just stretched out his hand and introduced himself by his name, and also introduced the girl next to him, whose name was Nanami. Then the hero asked about the name of the girl herself. The girl introduced herself as Falma and our hero informed the girl that from that day on they became friends and she could talk to them about anything. The young man realized that because of such an appearance, Falma did not leave the room anywhere and it was unlikely that she had to talk to anyone other than her family. No wonder the girl was excited. Interrupting the young man's thoughts, Nanami grabbed Falma's hand and dragged her to play, thereby surprising Falma. After all, the girl always thought that everyone was afraid of her and asking Nanami about it, she only answered the question. Belfast looked at his daughter and told only Yuta that she was happy. Yuta was thinking about Nanami's bad manners, because she very abruptly grabbed the girl and ran with her. But the reason for everything was that Nanami was just glad that a friend of her age suddenly appeared, and both he and his father looked at the girls, who were happy to get to know each other. Belfast told the young man that Lily had been in their house earlier, but all of them, when they saw his daughter, ran away shouting, Monster, and he was glad that the guys agreed to go to him. And he told the young man that he wanted Falma to feel the most ordinary happiness and that he was very lucky that the guys were with them now, the man said smiling. In the evening, it was said that the rooms were prepared and the food too. The mansion was now completely at the disposal of the guys, and they could use it as they wished, the man informed them. From that day on, our hero's life began in the Belfast house. The young man had everything, mountains of food and beds, and also games with Falma. So a month passed and Nanami and Falma became so close that now it seemed like they were sisters. The girls were always together, and our hero was next to them, too. That day they played and shouted to Utah that the young man was the one who had to drive in the game. Our hero, out of breath, could not keep up with the girls at all and he had to lean on the door to catch his breath. At the moment when Yuta hit the door, a picture appeared in front of him in the form of a huge fur, which stood in this abandoned room like a trophy. Falma, seeing that the young man stopped and did not continue the game anymore, came up and asked what happened to Yuta. The same one looked through the open door and seeing the robot in front of him asked the girl what was in front of him and she told that her father had once bought this magician mechanism. Falma explained to the hero that as the mechanism was dug out, the double Highlanders immediately checked its operability but it could not move due to some malfunction and therefore the girl's father bought it as a collector's item. The young man did not understand how it could have been excavated, because it seemed to him that magic mechanisms were being produced. But Falma explained that with current technologies it was not possible to create the core of their empire, and therefore they dug up the cores of the former civilization and then built everything else. The young man looked at Falma, because she knew a lot about these mechanisms. The girl explained that they were extremely attractive, but people couldn't create them from scratch. Such an unknown force fascinated the girl, and she looked at the fur that was in front of her. The young man said that even if the robot had moved, then nothing would have shone for him with his Rudia 2 potential, and then Falma first learned how much the young man's potential was. Yuta also asked about Falma's potential, and that one had it equal to 780, which was not a little. Nanami, who ran up to them, asked the heroes about what they were whispering about without her, and then Falma asked Nanami about her meaning of Rudia. Yuta remembered the story of the door where they had previously lived and decided to say that Nanami could not open the door of those slaveholders. So her strength was an order of magnitude lower, the young man reasoned. But Nanami had just told Yuta that she had never touched the door. Yuta looked at Nanami, not knowing what to say to her, and thought to himself that the probability of Nanami's potential for Rudia could be high. A little later, they had a chance to find out the potential of Rudia and Nanami. 
Belfast took advantage of his connections and called a man who could change him. And Nanami got into this apparatus, which was previously seen by all the schoolchildren who arrived on this planet. The supervisor was shocked by the value where the potential was 32,000 and it was a triple Highlander. Everyone looked at Nanami in surprise. Belfast looked at the girl and said that she had an amazing number of rudiments and that the girl would be welcome in any state, so if she wanted, the man could introduce her to the top so that she could get any job she wanted. But the girl ran up to the guys and said that she needed it there was no need, she wanted to stay here with Yuta and Falma. The hero was thinking that Falma had a good friend. At another time and in another place, someone was thinking about the mysterious world and the mysterious auction. Because her classmates had gone somewhere, and the girl sadly remembered Yuta, who was somewhere not far from her, at least in her thoughts and slowly clenched her hands into fists to give free rein to the emotions that overcame the girl so she stood with her head down and thought about the young man. There was a castle ahead of the road. The man who stood next to the frail girl ordered all the servants to meet and greet Lady Yui, who was a triple Highlander. Getting out of the carriage, the man asked Ms. Yui to look at her feet so that she would not suddenly fall in front of everyone. The girl's thoughts were occupied with the fact that she did not consider herself an outstanding person and considered herself completely incapable. At that moment, she was greeted by the man who sat on the throne and wondered at the youth of the girl, who, in his opinion, did not look at all like a triple Highlander. Nijina, who was standing next to Yui, asked her to follow his example and bow her head in front of His Highness the Emperor. The girl looked in front of her and her tutu was asked not to do this because she was special. Yui was considered the fifth triple Highlander in the country and the Emperor. Explaining this to the girl, asked her to simply swear to faithfully serve him. The man asked Lady Yui to go with him before taking her to the rooms prepared for the girl. He wanted to show her a magic mechanism that was intended directly for Yui and which she would control in the future. Yui, on the other hand, listened uncomprehendingly to her escort and only asked again about the magic mechanism. Yui was led into a room that looked like a warehouse, where all the mocks were standing. Standard models were stored here, and high-end copies were located a little further in the warehouse. And Yui, along with an escort, came to the hangar, so the girl was asked to be careful when opening the doors. And after opening the doors, the man showed Yui her magic mechanism. She saw a huge robot, shining and striking with its power to anyone who looks at it. It was Elvar's magic mechanism. To launch, the potential of Rudia 30,000 is needed. Its maximum power was 3 million. Armor and maneuverability were 55 ranks. The guy who came up finished the man's words that it was truly a monstrous car. The man, looking at the young man, greeted him and it was unexpected to see a guy, his name was Yuta. Yuta looked at the girl in front of him and wondered if Jonah was a new pilot. After presenting himself to the girl, the young man smiled and tried to win over Yui. He also told her that he was also sold five years ago, and he was also from Japan, so if something was unclear to her, then the girl could turn to him. The young man was called by other workers, because they had finished preparing the Azula and Yuta needed to be present at this. So turning around and waving his clothes, he had to leave the others and return to work. Yui watched the guy leave, and the escort told her that the guy was a five-time Highlander, Mr. Yudo. His Rudia potential was 57,000 and he was called the strongest pilot on the entire continent. Yui tried to realize that a man like Yudo was the strongest on the continent and continued to look after the young man. The escort standing behind her said that thanks to the young man, their elder empire of Alicia is considered the most powerful on the continent, so sometimes Yudo allows himself more than the emperor himself. And whispering in his ear, the man believed that Yui and Yudo should have become friends. The girl was confused by the words of the escort, who continued to talk about how to control Alvara. The commissioner will tell the girl tomorrow, but the sooner the girl can get behind the wheel and help the country, the more we will not finish Yui interrupted him. I don't. There was one request she wanted to tell. Yui started talking about the guy who was sold at auction earlier, for a fetus, and the man remembered about the defective guy with a two, to which the girl screamed at these words, because she did not expect to hear this. Then she tried to protect the guy and immediately apologized for her tone. She tried to explain to the escort that she was worried about the fate of the young man and whether he could find out about the guy. The man immediately said that he would order the guy to be outbid in elision as soon as he found him. Yui was glowing with happiness after his words. She did not expect that the escort would agree to her request so quickly. Privately, Yui had always thought about the young man since the first grade and had a liking for him, a guy who was honest and kind in character. But the girl thought that she paid attention to her feelings too late, because she wanted to gain the courage and just share and express everything to Yuta on a school trip, to tell the young man that Yui loves him. At that time, in another place, after hearing the news from Belfast, Yuta and Nanami turned around. The same one closed the doors more tightly, because there was a rumor about the potential of Nanami's Rudia and spread throughout the country, so the army began to act. Yuta could not believe that they would have to run away with Nanami again. 
because the man wanted to cover them in front of the military, who were about to come to his house. Before they could finish speaking, the sixth mage squad was knocking on the door. The mechanisms of Rudevan's army. Belfast informed the guys that the army was already in place. The army was chanting that by imperial order they had come to take a triple Highlander girl into service and that no one wanted Blunche. Belfast pretended that he didn't have any girlfriend and carefully kept the door closed. Falma looked at the guys sadly, because she knew that now they would be destined to separate and perhaps they would never see each other again. At this time, the guards outside the doors decided that they had only one way left to enter the estate and decided to act to get to Nanami. Belfast thanked Nanami and Yuta for the fact that in such a short period of time they were able to give his daughter an ordinary human being and, without finishing, his back was struck by the weapon that the soldiers sent to the door. All the guys looked at this picture and were shocked by how it ended. Belfast fell to the floor in front of the boys and Falma ran screaming to her father. The father was lying on the floor and looking at his daughter apologized to Falma. The girl was crying and asked her father not to die. Falma held her father on her lap and he only asked Yuta to take the girl with him because he no longer wanted to make his daughter sad. And turning to Yuta, the man asked him to keep his promise. Yuta, of course, was ready for this. Her father turned to Falma, telling her that he was glad to see her happy and just playing games, as if she were the most ordinary girl. The father, looking at his daughter, asked Falma if she was happy, while she, looking at him through tears, told her father that she had not been so happy since birth. At these words, the father closed his eyes with tears filling them and smiled. The army was already ready to break into the house and our hero, tearing her away from her father, shouted that they did not have time and they had to leave already, grabbing the girl by the hand, Yuta shouted. They all understood this, because if the army took them away, then everyone would be separated again and they decided to flee. The knights tried to break into the house, and the guys hiding around the corner of the house looked at the military who were trying to reach them. There were a lot of military for several children, standing next to the young man. Nanami invited Yuta to climb into the furs that stood in front of them and which our hero had once seen. Yuta looked at the robot and realized that this was their last chance to escape. The guys ran towards the mech, and the hero asked Falma how they could get inside this robot. Falma explained that there was a hatch on his chest and a ladder was nearby. Yuta stared at the robot in fascination, but then pulled himself together and put a ladder to the robot. Opening the hatch, they climbed into the furs. Opening the hatch of the Ute robot, he saw the cockpit in front of him, where there was a seat and a dashboard. Climbing inside the mech, Yuta tried to close the hatch, while asking Falma about the box that the girl was holding and saying that they could hardly fit into this pilot's cabin. Then, hearing someone's footsteps, Yuta asked the girls to be quiet, because someone was walking. As soon as the guys settled down, Falma said that another mech entered the room and it was a magician. The mechanism of the army of Ruta ends off. The robot stood and said that there could be no mistake here. He definitely saw someone enter this room, but only a magician saw it. The mechanism, which, in their opinion, was very old and barely working. The robots continued to communicate with each other about the mechanism and decided that by coming for the triple Highlander, they could defeat even such an antique that was in front of them. And they decided to break the robot just in case. So one of the robots asked the other to give him a spear. The guys realized that they had a problem and Falma didn't know what to do. Yuta, horrified and desperate, decided to act because the young man had no other option. And he took the handle and wanted to try out the mechanism, hoping that it still worked. Sitting at the control panel, Yuta activated this broken mech without realizing it. Falma shouted at Yuta to dodge the enemy. The magicians attacking the guys were surprised that this prehistoric specimen could move and evade their attacks. Yuta saw that the robot moved, and Falma explained to the guy that the Meg mechanism was controlled by consciousness and the young man needed to think in a control ball to defend himself from attacks by other magicians. Falma tried to calm the guy down by talking about how the two of them could handle these magic mechanisms in front of them. Yuta shouted to the girl that he was unarmed and asked at the same time if Falma had a weapon. The girl frantically tried to remember and then the image of her father surfaced in front of her, after which she told Yuta that they did not need weapons and that Yuta should have just beaten them. The magician mechanism, which obeys Yuta, moved confidently and was able to punch Boron Zobs, because she was of rank D. The pilot, who was sitting in the robot, was surprised. Yuta liked this amazing thing, and Falma only said that Rudo and Zobs were no good for them, because Yuta could defeat them with one blow without a weapon. Nanami was also glad that it seemed to her that the magic mechanism was strong and they decided to act, trying to break through the three of them on a mech, which was controlled by one young man, in order to break through at the same pace and escape from the army that was chasing them. Standing in a fighting stance, the robot was ready to attack. The hero tried to drive the robots that came after them out of the hangar, and Falma still thought that they were not strong enough to fight back. But the young man was determined, even though initially there were three against one. 
The rest of the robots looked at Utah in this mechanism and tried to unravel the secret of how the hero was able to defeat two people in this magic mechanism. One of the robots was telling the other that in order to deal with the one inside, they needed to surround and slaughter him, one suggested to the other. They surrounded Utah and began to attack the guy. Our hero repelled all attacks in time and taking up arms. He defeated all the other magicians and used another mechanism instead of a shield. The robot stood up, and our hero tried to defeat them again and dealt with each one in turn. Having defeated everyone, Yuta stood and looked at the many defeated fighters with whom he could fight and find out everything on the battlefield. Standing over all these fighters, the young man sighed heavily and was glad that he had coped. At the next moment, the hero turns to Falma and decided to ask the girl where they had to run, because he did not know the area at all. Falma stood behind the young man and said that they needed to cross the border and go to the trading state of Alpeca. Perhaps Rudaven would not be able to get them there. It was not far to the border and Falma told about the trails that an ordinary person would not walk, but they needed it. Nanami asked if the strong mechanism caught her eye, and then Falma thought of a transporter that they would be good to buy. All the rank and file and citizens whose work is related to the use of mag had such a transporter. Mechanisms or the rich. The young man listened to Falma, but turning away abruptly, Yuta tried to apologize to Falma for his father, but the girl told the young man that they were not to blame either. Rudavan was responsible for everything, and Falma decided that she would never forgive him for what he had done. Nanami also supported her friend, telling Yuta that they had to avenge Belfast and would not leave a whole stone from Rudawan. Falma thanked the young man and asked him to find a powerful magician in Alpka, a mechanism for Nanami. And the young man looked at Falma, who said that she still thought that Yuta's Rudia potential was far from two, it was a mistake. The match they rode today couldn't even get the triple Highlanders to work. But then the young man was told that perhaps he had an even more amazing non-standard value of the potential of Rudia, which was discussed in this state and throughout the continent. The Lealai from the country that bought the man were very kind. There was plenty of food, a big beautiful house and everyone respected and revered. But the girl who told this story about herself did not want this. She needed, as a teacher, to protect all her students and return to the old world. She sat in the magic mechanism and took command from Commander Muji. Someone informed Ruriko that he had switched to a private channel and offered to talk after the fight and asked to give him some time. The girl sitting in the mechanism agreed to the offer that she received and was ready to act further on command. The enemy squad was discovered. Other mechanisms informed the girl and confirmed the presence of 12 magicians like them. Commander Muji of the 2nd Police Platoon took command. Attention was given to everyone. Attack from three sides and wait for the signal. The attack was given, and they moved. The battle began, and the enemy was destroyed in a few moments. The enemy was offered to surrender, because their magical mechanisms were defeated. Looking at the surrendered people from the mechanisms, the teacher saw her students standing with their hands up. They were Uba Sakura and Taguchi Nami. Sensei was horrified by what she saw, and wondered what her students were doing here. Just thinking about it, another magician mechanism tilted the sword towards the girl and, asking about the rest of the squad, injured her with his sword because she did not know where her squad was and could not answer anything. Seeing that the situation was escalating, Sensei knew that she had to do something, otherwise the death of her student was inevitable. Because the girl answered the questions of the magician of the mechanism from her squad by saying that she did not know any information and only the mechanism tried to hit her with a sword. As the teacher sided with the student and protected her repelling the attack of his colleague, he did not expect that Ruriko would repel the attack of his own Meg mechanism from the squad. But the teacher was determined and asked her colleague what he was trying to do with her students and a fight broke out between them. Muji shouted at Ruriko over the comm that it was him and did not understand why the girl was attacking her own. He tried to shout to the others to stop Deputy Commander Ruriko, because no one could understand what had happened and why the girl attacked her own. The girl exhaled, but they kept asking her why she did it and what she was going to do next. Oriko, on the other hand, was thinking in her magic mechanism about this incomprehensible world in which she and her students found themselves and who were forced to fight each other, she couldn't just leave it like that. Standing up to the girls, she asked them to get into the mechanisms faster. Uba and Taguchi heard the voice of their teacher, who asked them to leave here as soon as possible. Deputy Commander Ruriko was not allowed to leave by her colleagues, but the girl wanted only one thing, the safety of her students and to return to their former world altogether. The trading state of Alpeca looked rich and prosperous, but the outskirts were filled with barracks and other poor houses. The whole city looked lively. There were people everywhere, beautiful architecture. Falma was sitting in front of the guys and they asked her if the girl had changed her mind, to which she replied that she was going to sell precious stones. Yuta asked the girl not to do this, because it was a parting gift from Mr. Belfast. But then the girl replied that if she decided to sell, then she would sell the stones. Yuta asked her to be careful in this case and not sell it for cheap. 
Yuta asked the girl to look for a merchant who can be trusted and get only one stone, and then ask about the price of this very stone. So they went to the market, where one of the sellers estimated it at 2 million, the other believed that the work was good, but too old and therefore offered to buy the stone for a million. When he came to the next workshop, the master said that it was a cheap fake, so he decided to charge 10,000 for it. The guy sat in the garden after their trips to the merchants and asked about the value of the stones, decided what they would do next, remembering how much they were offered. They decided that they could sell the stone to someone who offered 2 million for the stone. Everyone agreed with the young man, but then a stranger called out to them. The stranger stood next to them and asked them to forget about that merchant, because otherwise they would regret it. Yuta, asking himself a question, thought about the man who was in front of them and Falma agreed with him, saying that the guy was very suspicious. The young man remembered that he should have said hello and introduced himself as Jean was glad to meet all the guys. Then our heroes decided to ask what they should have regretted. Jean explained to the guys that the seller they met earlier would first give a high price to their stones. And then as they brought all the other stones, find some kind of defect and drop the price. It was common practice in such a big city, everyone wanted to cash in on what they were doing. Yuta thought about his words, but then Jean suggested that they hire him. Jean asked the young man to listen to him and his ideas. The merchant they were going to call the price, and Jean could sell to another buyer for one and a half times more expensive. One tenth would be his, and if he could not sell the stones, then nothing had to be paid to him. And he asked how the guys liked his idea. The young man leaned over to Falma, looking at the chest, informed the girl that he was not very good at negotiations and asked Falma to help him. The girl listened to him attentively and nodded. The guys thought that they would not be able to deceive them that way and decided that they would hire a guy. When he came to the next store, the buyer offered to take all the stones for 10 million because the goods were good, but the quality, in his opinion, was lame, so he would not offer our heroes any more. Jean heard about 10 million and thought about it, suggesting that the guys go after him because he would sell their stones for more than 12 million. The guys came to the next shop and offered the merchant to buy such stones. He offered to take their stones for 15 million. Then Jean asked not to make him laugh, because in front of the man was an emerald of the tenth sample, and the stone next to him was of rank only these two stones were already worth more than 10 million and he offered only 15 million for that's it. Then the young man said that he also had a trading network and it was clear to him what kind of trade this seller was engaged in. Jean said that he would tell everyone about Limbit and spread rumors about his trading manipulations. The man was very scared when he heard this and looked at the young man who asked for 20 million for his stones. Jean shouted at Limbit, because he knew their price, and he tried to deceive him. The man called the last price at 30 million, but it was the maximum, he had no more and he asked to spare him in his wallet. The next moment, the guys were sitting and counting their money. Yuta thought that he had received three times the agreed amount, although he was satisfied with the agreement of one and a half times. Everyone looked at the bags of money in front of them. Jean was also sitting counting his amount and then decided to ask what the guys were going to do with such a huge amount that they had. Yuta replied that they were going to buy a magician. Mechanism Jean was surprised to learn that the guys in front of him were pilots and decided to ask what kind of magic mechanism they wanted to buy. Then Yuta explained that the one that needed the potential of Rudia to launch was more than 10,000. Then Jean was even more surprised to learn that there were Highlanders in front of him. But Falma explained that Yuta was not one of them. Nanami just stood by and watched. Jean looked at them and said that he was not interested in what Falma was saying, but was interested in another way. And he thought about the mechanism for Highlander. The next moment, Yuta, hearing the amount of 100 million gold, dropped the cup on the floor in surprise. Jean thought it was still cheap for a Highlander magician. This thing wasn't cheap. Yuta said that they didn't have that kind of money, because what they sold today was all they had left. Jean, looking at the guys, said that there was nothing for Highlander that he could not do. Jean brought the guys to watch the sword fights, where they placed bets and fought with magic mechanisms. Highlanders were not often found in such battles, so he would be able to hit the jackpot if he was lucky, because the fights were on magic mechanisms, which meant that Highlander had an advantage over other players. The young man looked at the mechanisms that were fighting in the arena and asked how they could sign up for the fight. Then Jean saw the interest in the young man's face and offered to let him take care of this matter. Nanami sadly asked if Yuta could handle an opponent who looked very strong. Jean looked at the young man in surprise, having learned that he would fight and asked about his Rudia potential. Then Yuta asked not to worry about him and smilingly called his Rudia potential equal to 2. Jean, hearing that the guy had a 2, was surprised and asked if it would be better if a girl fought. But then the guy said that they had no other choice, because the mechanism they had could only be controlled by a young man. 
The girls were with a different potential and this fur was not with him managed. Jean was surprised by what the guy told him, because he had never heard such a thing. How it was possible to control such a mechanism with a deuce, because he couldn't even light a magic lantern with such a potential of ore. The young man explained to Jean that their mechanism was a little strange. It was not so easy to understand. Meanwhile, the second round was announced and the pilot who won several times in a row entered the ring. It was Yamakura Shinsuke. Yuta remembered his classmate, a boy with the same name. He is opposed by a veteran of sword battles. The total number of his victories exceeds 500 and it was all men. The man sitting in the fur wanted to show the youngster that in sword fighting, Rudia's potential did not solve anything. Yamakura was a reserved guy, and our hero never talked to him, but when he saw the reaction of the young man, very stormy, who said that he would make a man regret that he did not give up immediately. The battle has begun. The mechs collided in a sword fight. Yamakura tried to attack the old man, who dodged him and attacked the young man in response. The battle continued and everyone tried to show their might and that they could defeat the enemy. And having made the last lunge, Yamakura became the winner. It was definitely our hero's classmate. And he became a completely different person. There wasn't a drop of the quiet guy the guy had seen before. Jean asked if Yuta understood what was waiting for him. In the Colosseum, they fought to the death. And it was better for the young man to think about his rival, who gnawed out victory for himself and was ready to do anything for her. Yuta already understood this very well. Looking at the fight in front of him, Yuta believed that if he was of the same level, the guy would win. Then Jean, hearing his words, wanted to find a rival for him as soon as possible and thought about who he would find. In front of Jean sat a warrior, the great red dragon Kejin, who did not want to fight with a novice and told Jean about it. Jean tried to put pressure on the warrior, saying that they gave 20 million for the fight. When he heard the amount, he began to think seriously about the battle. Jean confirmed that they really gave so much for the fight and asked if the warrior wanted to fight. He agreed with the sword fight and asked Jean not to regret it later. The same one said that it was mutual, so they decided. Yuta understood that this was his first experience as a pilot and he would start with a sword fight. The duel would be the first in the afternoon. And the young man stood looking at his fur. Then he was asked, because under his pseudonym it was empty, the young man realized that he did not have it. The girl who asked him about the pseudonym said that he needed it for registration and had to come up with it now. The young man thought about it and realized that he couldn't think of a suitable one right away. But he remembered about his favorite anime in which a powerful white lion fought. And the name of this lion was Elio. And our hero, looking at his fur, asked the girl to write him down as Elio. Here it was announced that the next match would be fought by a novice. Who had his first fight today and his mechanism was Elio. And his opponent was an average swordsman. Who had already won 50 victories, the red dragon Kejin and his mechanism Halga. The young man had already started to climb into the furs and then Jean asked him to pretend that he barely won. Yuta did not understand why he had to do that, then Jean said that this would affect his next fight. Yuta saw the bets. 57 people believed in him, compared to 18 of his opponent. And I was surprised by this number. The Mechs began their battle. The command was given. The young man attacked first, which surprised Kejin. Yuta thought that this man was slower than boss and in general he was all open, so the young man could counterattack him, but Jean asked him to win an uncertain victory. There was nothing to be done. And the young man decided to go to the ram and make their deception even more beautiful. Then the young man realized that he had beaten his opponent and now his business was bad. What will Jean say? The paint flew off the armor and the young man thought that this was the end for the opponent. But he stood up and told the guy that he had underestimated him. Did not expect the guy to be so strong and now decided to move seriously. The young man praised Kejin in his heart and knew that he could still fight. Kejin asked the guy to try his killing technique. But the young man... Not understanding what he was talking about, just tried to take his blow. They locked in a fight and breaking through Holga's armor. The man looked at the guy and couldn't believe his eyes. The young man was able to defeat him. The presenter announced the winner and it was Yuta, Leo. The guy was shocked no less than everyone else by his victory. Coming out of his fur, the girls and Jean were already waiting for him, who looked at the guy with disbelief and condemnation. He told Yuta that he had asked him to win, pretending that it was hard for the young man. Yuta was apologizing because it came out somehow by itself, and he did not know that he would win this way. Jean was worried that because of this situation he would not be able to find a rival for the young man now. Nanami and Falmer rolled out the basket and showed Yuta how much they were given, and they gave the guys a hundred thousand in gold and our hero won it all. The guy, looking at the basket with money, could not believe this amount. Jean also said that his merit was there, because he offered and found an opponent for the guys. Sitting in Utah's tavern, I thought about how bad his business was, because now no one wanted to fight with him. After all, last time the young man thought that he overdid it and there was his absolute dominance in the fight. The guys also sat next to him and rejoiced at his victory. Jean continued to pour himself a drink. 
and the young man asked him to stop and asked if their new acquaintance could fix the situation they were in now. Jean, of course, had a secret plan for such situations. Because there was nothing to do here and only he could be used. Then the guys came into the tavern and saw a guy. They couldn't believe that Yuto was really in front of them. They were Haranishi, Yamakura and Shibai. The young man was very happy to see his classmates. Who were also alive, like himself. So the guy smiled and asked the others how they were doing. But the grimace that distorted Haranishi's face said that the guy was unhappy with something. Namely that in the past they were classmates, but this did not give him the right to call them by their first names, Haranishi told Yut. Yuta was struck by the words of the young man and he continued to say that the guy was like a star before them. Yuta asked his classmate again, trying to understand what he was talking about, but he continued to shout at Yuta not to talk to them as equals. Haranishi shouted that he was an elite with the potential of Rudia 33 -0. And the young man compared to him was garbage with the value of Rudia too. Yuta swore with the guy because he did not understand why he addressed him like that and why the number of Rudia became so important to him. Haranishi shouted at the guy to start at respect. Nanami silently observed the situation. But then she got up and asked the guys not to make a fool of Yuta. Because they were friends, why would they say such terrible things? Falma supported her. Haranishi and all the other guys started making fun of him that the guy had become a slave to some little girl. Then they started discussing his things and looked at Falma and said that wearing such clothes in front of them was rude. The next moment, one of them reached for Falma's hood, which the girl wore to hide her ears, and just as he wanted to take it off, the girl turned around and said that she would force him to obey her if Haranishi took off her hood. But it was too late. The hood was removed and people were screaming in horror that Falma was a beastman. Yuta was so angry because of what Haranishi had done that the next moment the guy got from Yuta right in the face, not understanding why he hit him, asked what Yuta was trying to do. Yuta shouted at him that he did not know what it was like to have a high potential of Rudia, but enjoying such things that others would be disgusted with was worse than garbage. Jean saw this as a new opportunity and putting the glass on the table, loudly so that everyone could hear, he told the guys that he did not know what kind of relationship they had, but they were all swordsmen and that if they could settle everything in the Colosseum, at the fights, and not at the fists in the tavern. Yuta was outraged, as was Haranishi, that he would have to fight. Jean did not understand at all what Haranishi meant by calling Yuta garbage. But Yuta, who tried to object to him, immediately fell silent, because Jean had a plan and it was time to get an ace out of his sleeve, the guy reported. The fight was one against three, Jean informed the others. The bet was 40 million and the condition was one to win a crushing victory. Haranishi looked at Jean and all his friends too, surprised that he offered a bet of 40 million, which was simply incomprehensible, because this is money that was wasted. Jean did not reproach them for their words and said that if they did not accept the fight, it meant that they were afraid of Yuto having played on their sore spot. Jean forced the guys to accept the challenge and they agreed. The next moment, there was a roar from the crowd in the Colosseum and everyone was ready to watch today's fight. He was special, a rookie who showed his crushing power in yesterday's debut fight to fight against three rivals. The host said in the arena, Falma saw that this time Yo was holding a weapon in his hands. Jean explained to the girl that this was so, because this time our hero was fighting against three and with his fists it would be strange. In this battle, a warrior is fighting who has 10 victories in a row and this is Yamakura Shinsuke. Haranishi Bidizii and Shinbai Yasuke were also with him. Their mechanisms, Ranza, Edel and Misu, the presenter informed the entire assembled people. Yut Jean and Falma shouted that these tonfas were made of a magnet, and that Yut needed to be more careful, and the girl asked the guy to win. The battle has begun. Three of them went on the attack on our hero. Haranishi thought that the previous fight was probably rigged and wanted to show how meaningless it was. Yuto has a two and that said it all for these guys. Yuto went on the attack, surprising everyone with his tenacity. There was a fight and it was already unclear where whose fur was and who was winning, but at some point our hero's opponents did not understand what was happening. Haranishi, looking at Yuta, thought he was joking. A man with the potential of Rudia too was not capable of such a thing. And then he thought that Yuta had deceived them. The young man did not know what to do. If he lost in this fight, he would lose everything and everything would come to an end, Haranishi said in fear, but Yuta did not care, because he had asked for this battle and the guy had defeated him. There was a standing ovation, and the host announced the winner, it was Yuta Olio. Yuta looked sadly at the place where the broken robot was and thought about how much his comrades had changed after coming to this world. They began to divide people according to a new feature. Namely, their potential for autonomy. Our hero couldn't help but wonder if all his classmates had changed in the same way as the three he met today and whose behavior he was disappointed by. After the victory, Nanami rushed to the guy and Yuta, smiling at his friends, swore to himself that he would not become the same as his former classmates. 
The girl, sitting at the controls of her mech, calculated how many mechanisms were around her and, after counting several pieces, exhaled, then she felt that they were going to attack her from behind and repelled the attack. The battle continued and Yui was attacked from all sides. She calculated all her steps and dodged the attacks of the mechs. The girl was watched by an escort and a new acquaintance named Yudo, who was asked to finish her training for today. The girl had an amazing fighting style, Yudo told her. She became much stronger in just one month. But the girl was very modest and believed that it was all thanks to Yudo's instructions. Yudo believed that it was all Yui's talent. He did not expect that the girl would be able to develop her abilities so quickly. Perhaps next time you will need to try your strength in battle, the guy said. And he asked how he felt about the Jimili in front. But the escort interrupted him and asked if his request would be fulfilled. The guy Yui asked about with the potential of Rudia too. Whether he was checked and whether there were negotiations for a ransom with the merchant who purchased him. And the man reported that this same merchant was punished so that this would not happen again. Because that guy ran away. This was the information of the attendant in front of Yui and the girl sighed sadly. The man asked her to be calm. Because their special services were focused only on this. Because the day when they would find the young man was soon. The girl was very worried about him and asked him to do everything in their power. The guys ended up in a hotel where everything sparkled and glittered with luxury. Falma and Nanami were happy. It was a completely different level compared to previous goodies and even more amazing than the house in which Falma herself lived, even though her father was a merchant, but it was a higher level. The girls were jumping on the bed, and Jean was talking about how soon everything would end and the young man would no longer be able to earn money from fights. Yuta thought that Jean was joking with him. Jean sat drinking his drink and explained to Yuta that even though he was able to fight a couple of times after defeating three of his friends, he was too strong and soon there would be no rivals for his level, Jean believed. Yuta couldn't figure out what he should do in such a case. Then they saw that the girls had jumped up and broken the bed. Jean said that in any case, they had already earned 200 million and could quite buy Meg the mechanism. But the young man would like two copies, and also a transporter for them, whether they have enough money for all these purchases, Yuta thought. Jean was thinking about the second Highlander and asked Yuta about it. The guy said that he needed another one for the potential of the ore equal to 780. But once they needed two, and they were in great demand, Jean was afraid that the guys would not have enough money. Yuta kept thinking about the fights. Jean told Yuta that only one could fight him now and he did not advise the guy to fight with him. He was the strongest fighter with a Rudia potential of 23,000 and he won 120 fights in a row. The young man wanted to fight him, whoever he was, but the enemy was not easy. No matter how strong our hero was, the young man thought about the potential of Rudia, which was equal to 23,000, but still decided to fight this warrior and let this be his last fight. Jean thought the guy was crazy because his opponent would be a double Highlander, but it didn't matter to the young man, he intended to win. Jean was trying to figure out how the guy had such self-confidence, but since he said that, Jean decided not to stop the young man and asked how much he would bet. The young man was thinking about the 200 million bet, and Jean, looking at him, was thinking about how the guy was doing one stupid thing after another. In the evening, everyone went to bed, our heroes always slept together, and Jean, drunk, slept on his bed and did not think about anything, unlike our heroes. Nanami asked the young man to think about settling in some quiet place and living there when Falma avenges her father. Everyone wanted it together. Yuta looked at Nanami and thought that maybe they could do it. Nanami looked at Yuta and asked if he was going to fight again. The young man nodded and the girl, embarrassed, asked him to be careful. Yuta assured her that everything would be fine. No matter what recklessness he committed, he did not want to worry the girls, whose fate, by chance, was in his hands. All he could do was bluff baselessly, but he didn't tell anyone about it and just smiled, telling Nanami that she didn't have to worry there. In another place, a girl sitting on a chair was thinking about the strongest fighter because she thought it would be some old man who decided to fight her. But it turned out to be a little boy and it was unexpectedly pleasant for her, she reasoned, sitting with a glass in her hand. Yuta also did not expect to see a pretty girl in front of him. Jean reported a bit of 200 million and asked how it would be for her. The girl asked what the conditions of the fight were. The girl was not interested in money. She wanted to set her own condition. The loser would become the property of the winner. This condition scared the young man. Jean also said that no one could agree to such a thing, but our hero agreed. He was not only sweet, but also brave in the girl's opinion. Jean also told the guy that if the guy loses, he will become a slave and that it was wrong. But Yuta steadfastly said that he would withstand everything. Jean was trying to figure out when the young man would stop being so self-confident. Addressing Yuta as a boy, she introduced herself as a Luna. Yuta asked not to call him that, because he also had a name. It means Yuta, the girl said and said that she would like to make him her own as soon as possible and wished the young man and herself good luck in battle. The guy said that it was mutual, while he was a little worried about this person. 